Hey everyone, Savannah. I'm here for Floss Tube 49. It is March. Oh, I don't have my watch on. It's March 2nd. March 2nd. Yes, Monday. Um, I decided to do this one a little bit later than no I normally do just because I had a project I wanted to start on Leap Day, so I wanted to be able to show that in this video. So that's why this video is just a hair late. Not a big deal, right? Um, don't mind my appearance. I don't like getting dressed if I don't have to. And yeah, my shirt says always late but worth the wait. I hate shirts that have this thing, but it was on sale for like $3 and it was the, um, it's super fuzzy and I can wear it to bed if I'm, if it's a cold night or something like that. Um, the only ones that didn't have sayings in the same material were like neon pink and orange. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want those colors. <laughs> so, yeah, don't, don't look at the saying, okay? Um, anyways, let's do floss tube. Let's hope that this is shorter than normal now that I'm doing a separate knitting podcast. Um, okay. So, recap real quick. Um... The way that I am s stitching my projects um, is I'm going down the line from oldest to newest and working on them for a week. Um, some are getting special time during the day so I can kind of get them finished. Um, but other than that, main whip, you know, like mostly everything is getting one week and that's how I'm doing it. Currently, I have all my whips go out till June. So after the middle of June, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. If I'll recycle and go back through or something else might come up, who knows. But this is how I'm doing it. And I'm really enjoying it. This is what I have. I will start with um, finishes and then I'll show you my whips. Um, finishes so far. So this is a sal that I'm in. It's by Climbing Goat Designs on Etsy. It's called the Wonders of Space Sal. Again, I'm not a sal kind of person. Um, I have tried in the past and it's never worked, but this one really caught my eye, and so I decided to join. So this was February's block. This is called the Pillars of Creation. Um, you know, I'll insert pictures of what they look like. You know, like the real images, and I'll add the Ring Nebula as well. That was January's. So they come out about the 15th of each month, and uh, it took me three days to do this one, just because I didn't force myself to really, you know, work real hard on it. Um, and so yeah, it's just a nine block um, pattern, and yeah, it's, it's really lovely, I like it. This is a 28 count even weave of some sort that I have. But yeah, two over two. DMCs. Easy peasy. So there's that one. Um, another finish. I just finished this um, earlier this week. I started this week, finished it this week. Um, I had a friend who really, really wanted this piece. He saw my... I have stitched it before last year as a commission piece for a friend. And this other friend saw it and he said he really liked it and wanted one himself. I just never did it. And then uh, recently he kept asking me, so I'm like, okay, fine. So I started it and I finished it on the exact same day, one year later, that the first one was finished, which was kind of crazy. Um, I don't have it with me, but here is the photo of it. He likes it a lot. Um, okay, and that was stitched on 18 count Ada Sterling, maybe? It was a light blue, um, and I used, DM used DMC black, well, you know, 310, and then the leaves were, oh, I don't remember what the leaves were, but the blue flowers were Classic Color Works Mermaid, Mermaid's Fin. Yeah, I just decided to throw in some stuff. Um, okay, next finish, um is my Galaxy series, or I guess it's called Galaxy Hoops in the Cross Stitch Crazy magazine, January 2018. And then it's on Etsy now. It's by Stitchrobia, Emma Congdon. 
Um, you can get it on her Etsy. It's called Celestial Hoops, I believe. So there's four hoops total, uh, or, well, four little patterns total. Um, I stitched only two of them because I realized how much I hated them. <laughs> I hated stitching them. So I have two of them finished, and that's good enough. So this one's going to be put in a different hoop. But there's this one, and there is this one. Let me put that on top of so this fabric I dyed myself it's an eight uh, I think it's a 16 count either 16 or 14 count it's probably 14 count Ada um, that I dyed using a shaving cream method I do have a tutorial on my channel um, a year or so back oh, probably two years ago um, it is not color fast as you can see in this corner I tested a corner of it after it had fully dried and it had actually been a couple of months since I had dyed it and then I went and wet this corner to test it, it is not color fast at all. So if you do decide to do this method, just know you cannot wash your piece. Um, but yeah, so, oops. <laughs> I have hoops um, that I need to finish. I do plan to paint them or wrap them in black ribbon but so they look, you know, black and then I'll finish them off nicer than that. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it for that. Um, I'll throw in this uh, this other whip right here because that's it for finishes. That's it for finishes. I'll throw in this whip real quick um, just because it's one of those whips that isn't in a designated week like during the nighttime where my focus stitching is. This is just during the day. So I um, got the heart and hands, you know, square dance. I'm calling it part two, even though it doesn't say what parts it is. I'm just to keep for tracking purposes myself. This is part two. Um, I started April. I need to get that complete here soon since it is now March. But yeah. Um, I don't have the call for colors. So I just, well, actually, I do have these three called for colors, which is Weeks Dye Works, um, Sweet Potato, Grapevine, and Classic Color Works Colonial Copper. I have those three of the call for, but the rest I'll end up just using DMC because that's just that's what I do. Um, so there's that. That's one of those whips that gets worked in whenever I have a free moment during the day. All right, now let's go to my main whips of the month. In the beginning of this month, I was working on my Irish mandala. Um, I ended up working on this for two weeks. I got a, a week in January and then a week in February. And the only reason why this one got two weeks instead of the one week is because my um, Galaxy Hoops was scheduled for the first week of February, I believe. And I did not want to do that. I was just working on them during the day um, whenever I had a, a free moment to get these done. I just wanted them done. So I took that, that extra week and I gave it to my Irish Mandala by Chatelaine. Um, because this one did not get touched at, on at all in 2019. And I was I really wanted to see some progress on it. So... All the fancy stuff that's not even the DMC. Um, or the beads. So this got an extra week in February, like I said. And I, I absolutely love it. Let's see which way does it go. This thing's huge, of course. So I'm trying to fold this nicely where I can hold it easily. So um, I'm hoping to just be able to fit in photos of what they're supposed to look like um, in here. I'm not going to just say it because <laughs> I'm forgetting. But this is what I have. So what I... How do I explain this? So when I picked this up in January, I only had these, this corner and most of this corner done. And then I had... I don't think I had anything. Maybe a little bit of blue done in this corner and nothing else. I mean, obviously the whole center. So I finished up these two bottom corners and then I started adding in the next border around. 
which um, those are, uh, what are those? They're specialty stitches that I cannot remember what they're called. So I did all those. They're actually not, let me go down to the bottom because that's actually more finished. It's supposed to look like that. It'll have, um, it has like a blue silk lame braid um, back stitching around the dark green and then black around the light green color. I'm going to rip out that blue silk lame and do it long stitches instead of short like I did there, if you can see that. But that's what it's supposed to look like all the way around inside. And then, oh, what's next? I forget what's next, but I know I'm getting close to like the little scenery where there's cows and trees and castles. So I'm pretty excited about that. Very excited about that. Um, this is a 28 count even weave, maybe a Joblin, that I dyed myself to be like this light blue gray color. Um, yeah, I really like it. So that goes in my little llama bag that I made myself. And yeah, like I, I hope it comes back out. I we'll see if I do repeat what I'm doing. You know, in the second half of the year, we'll we'll see. I mean, it's it's a good possibility that that could happen just because I'm really enjoying this progress or the progress that I am making. Um, next is Ode to Mary. Um, this would have shifted like all my patterns would have shifted up if I did not give the Irish mandala a uh, second week, but it wasn't a big deal. Everything worked out just fine. So I have a photo of this one. Sorry about the glare. This is the um, Ode to Mary Needle Minder or Needle Roll by Dames of the Needle. It can only be found on their Etsy, not their actual website. Um, I'm doing this all in DMC. I'm having to convert myself because there is no conversion um, to this. Let me see. There is, it's all, oh, what is it? General Arts. It's, it's charted in General Arts. There's no DMC, so I'm having to do it myself, which isn't a problem. I have a print off of the color sheet, plus I'm writing them in as I go, so I don't have to keep checking that. So... Mm, this is what I have so far. Um, I am I. I added in all this bottom page. I could have finished it. Let's see here. It shows that I worked on this for one, two, three, four, five days. There was two days in there where I just did not get a chance to stitch that evening. If I would have been able to, I probably would have finished that page because it's, it's just this section right here. I kind of wish I would have, but. I don't let myself go over that one week span. If I don't get all se seven days, I, I don't. It's just how it's going for me. But I don't let myself go over. Um, oh, this fabric is a 28 count even weave. Um, I don't know what kind. And it's in, it just came in this color. Like a I don't know, light a light tan color. I don't know. Sometimes I don't keep the, or I don't have the uh, tag right there. What's next? Okay. After that was Halloween Rules by um, Lizzie Kate. So it'll look like that one complete. Ugh. And this is how much I have. So I had all of Halloween rules done. I had most of the puppy done. I just needed to add the dark spots on the these three dark spots and then all of, you know, the rest of it. So in one week I finished the majority of this one, added this one and did the majority of this one as well. I'm just missing the roof. I think it's just the roof. And I think it's like two or three colors. I did, uh, I do have to rip out these green stitches right here because I went over one too many. And that'll go over the pattern, you know, like the 
the width of the pattern. So, and this one, I do have the paper on there. <laughs> it is a 32 count Murano in mushroom. So yeah, I was pretty proud of my progress on that considering, you know, one week I get almost three blocks finished. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, next, three eagles. So this one, you guys probably remember from last year, I started this one at the end of 2018 and then I worked pretty prolifically on it at the beginning of last year because I had wanted to finish it by the, by the end of March last year and I burned out. I could not finish it. It's difficult to stitch on just because the A, the pattern is in grayscale so it's not easy to follow. So I can show you. That is the pattern. That sucks. Um, I'm wondering if I have a color copy and now that I have a color printer I can fix this and make it easier for myself. Um, oh, do I have a... Okay, you know, I don't have a picture of it. Anyway, so I never finished it last year. I never picked it back up last year, I don't think. Because I just... I couldn't. So I worked on it. It's very hairy. There is so much fuzz all over this thing. Um, so I picked it up and did what I could. There is a lot of confetti stitching that is needed in his face. So you can't even see what I worked on either. I'll show you in a second. But this is where so if you, since you can't see what I did pretty much um, this is where it was uh, when I put it down he's so fantastic looking I love him I wish I could just leave it like this and frame it but there's a bunch of missing stitches here and in his cheek and his lips area um, where else oh just everywhere so I just it looks so good when I hold him up um, and just look at him from a distance. Just fantastic. So let's see if I can show you what I actually worked on. If this will show up. You see that? The, those brown stitches? All those brown stitches I put in. That's 3371 on black. This is a 28 count black Joblin. And yeah. <laughs> It was rough going at first, but um, once I get the hang of it, it's not too terrible. It's just that pattern. I wish it was easier to read. So handsome. So there's three eagles. He is from the Nez Pierce, Nez something tribe, Idaho. I think they're from Idaho. Um, I got this pattern from pattern's hard to find. It is by Austin Thread Crafts, and the only way that I could find it is by googling Three Eagles Nez... Oh, I wish I could say it. It's like, it's like Pierce, but not Pierce. I will link it down below. I will find it and I will link it in case you, you want it. It is not the easiest thing to find. Um, anyways... So, yeah. And I did stop this one day um, early because it would have landed on leap day. And I really wanted to start something new on leap day. And I will show you that right here. Okay. Pull this all out. So, my leap day start is in this bag. My leap day start is my unicorn chart. And so I was like, it's my unicorn chart on a unicorn day. So I can't pull this magazine out very easily because it fits just snugly, but it is the Cross Stitch Collections July 2005. Um, I was lucky enough to find this. I know I've talked about it on my Instagram. Um, it was for this. This little tiny pattern right there. Well, it's not a tiny pattern, but picture. That is the King Henry VIII, I'm going to call it the sampler. I think it's the Palace of Richmond sampler, but they don't really have that, you know, what it's called. I'm just calling it a sampler. Since I do have another King Henry pattern. And that one's going to be called King Henry's Wives. 
Um, oh, what happened? Okay, um, so I started this on leap day. This is my leap day start. I am stitching this on um, 36 count linen. I don't know what kind of linen. Um, but it's in the color sand, by, and it's by Picture This Plus. And this is as far as I got. I do have to back stitch on the flower still. But yeah, super excited about that. So this is just getting added to the end of the my whip pile since this is my newest whip. So it'll just get it'll get a week's worth of work on if, in June. So I am stitching this one over two on thirty six count. I did try two over two, and I just did not like the way it looked. It was too bulky. So I'm doing just one over two and I like it. I don't mind the coverage at all. It'll make it look a little bit more antique-y. Yeah, I'm super excited about that. Again, unicorn pattern on a unicorn day. And that is it for my whips for this week. Um, March, my March lineup is pretty exciting. I am excited to sh to work on all the the I have what one two three four 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 patterns. Three of them are full coverage, um, but that's okay. Um, I'm pretty excited about the working on them. I haven't worked on them in a while, in a while. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, haul, I did get, um, I did spend a little bit of money, especially on leap day. I don't have like physical haul to show you. It's just going to be me inserting photos here. I got two Hades during the leap day sale and I bought another Chatelaine, <laughs> you know, couldn't help it. There was a, it was only 10% off, but you know, I've been dying to have this Chatelaine for more than a year. So I'm like, it's time. Just get it. Um, and then my husband can buy me the kit <laughs> for Christmas or birthday or for whatever. Um, so I will insert, I'm going to pull them up so I can see them, but I will insert photos of what they look like. The first one is Spread Your Wings. And it is by Roser Portella, if I pronounce that correct. This is the biggest hate I have ever purchased. Like, this thing is huge. And I didn't even hesitate. So the stitch size for this is 725 by 736. That's going to be 29 by 29. Um, I do plan on cropping um, both sides down. So that'll help a lot. I think that's like a whole column, like that first part next to her hand, next to the, or well, next to that butterfly. It's a whole page row. Or is it a column? A whole column of page, and then the majority of the next column of pages. And then on the other side, it's, I think, a whole page, and then there's a partial page. So. Something like that. I was looking at it in Pattern Keeper going through. That's something I do wish Pattern Keeper had a function to do. So since I, I you can highlight an entire page, easy peasy, one one go, you can but if you want to do just a partial page, you have to do each 10 by 10 square. And that takes some time. Especially on a pattern this big. Um, I wish there was an option where you could do whole columns or whole rows. That that would be nice. Um, so there's this one. I'm not sure when I'm going to start any of these, but they've been on, well, Spread Your Wings is relatively new, so it hasn't been on my wish list that long, but it's beautiful. I really like it. And then the second one that I purchased is Mini Blanche. Um, this one's by Melanie Dellen. Uh, this is only 225 by 370. So there's no, there's no need to crop any of this off. It's it's three pages across by six. No, not even six down. Four, five pages down. It's not that big. 
Um, it's going to look really lovely. Um, this one has been in my wish list for, for quite some time. So, yeah. I mean, I have a ton on my wish list, which is crazy. Most of them I have as, you know, don't buy. I just have them there for some reason, but I don't want them. <laughs> Um, this one was one that I, I kind of wanted. I think she's beautiful. I'm looking at her when I'm talking to you. <laughs> she's really pretty. So this one I probably would start before I started, start spread your wings, but we'll see. I am a little nervous considering that the majority of the colors, like if I wanted to stitch by color, most colors first, the, the, or the, you know, the color with the most first, that is... Um, it's white. I think it's 3865. I'm like, oh, that's going to be, that's going to be hell on white fabric. Um, but you know, it is what it is. And then the, I don't have it. I don't have it to open, but, and look at and tell you size wise. I mean, I could, if I go over here and open it, uh, it's the Chatelaine. It is the Sweet Garden of Elizabeth the First. This is one of the last Chatelaines Martina did right before she passed away. I remember she showed a sneak peek and I was anxiously waiting for it and then I got the news that she had passed and I was it was yeah, I was devastated that I couldn't get the pattern. But it was also very, very sad that she passed away. She's such a beautiful designer um and then when this was released um her daughter released this at the beginning of last year or yeah the beginning of 2019 and I just couldn't bring myself to purchase it you know they're expensive they are expensive patterns and I just didn't I had planned to purchase it in the middle of last year and that I just completely forgot and so when that coupon code came up for the 10% off. Um, I jumped on it. I said, nope, no more waiting. There is no instructions to this Chatelaine. It is technically an un incomplete pattern, but there is enough there to, to stitch it. And there has been people who have, there has been two people who have finished this one and it looks fantastic. So at least there's, there's those people, right? you know, we can ask for help. Um, let me see, does it say how large it is? Okay, it's 339 by 339. I just, I love it. Again, it's a, you know, it's a Tudor. It's a Queen Elizabeth the First. It's, it's my jam. It is my jam. So, again, I, won't, I don't know when I'm going to start this. I do hope to get the full kit. My other two Chatelaines, I have fully kitted minus beads. Um, I haven't gotten that far yet. Um, fully kitted myself. I have sourced all the fancy flosses and stuff and purchased them all by myself. That is the more expensive route. Um, this time I think I want to to get the kit. The kit's like 300 and some dollars. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. I will see you. Well, I'll see anybody who wants to see the knitting in the middle of the month, around the 15th. Okay? Bye.